Update 1.4 is bringing some pretty massive changes to Throne and Liberty. This will bring a lot of new content, significant improvements, and a whole load of new rewards you can obtain. So let's get into the details. The big hype will be the Halloween event, Haunted Harvest. You may have noticed it was supposed to actually come today, but due to critical stability issues, they made a delay. As compensation, you'll get 500 bonus ornate coins. Make sure to check your mail later today. Now this event brings a whole lot of new exciting stuff including a new co-op dungeon, Haunted Labyrinth. You'll be able to craft new event themed items, you'll get bonus rewards upon just logging in, and you'll be able to get some new items, a candy corn and dimension pumpkin currencies. You can see more details on them right here, with then new cooking recipes, pumpkin pie, pumpkin latte, and chocolate spider cookies. That pumpkin pie will be particularly useful for the mastery bonus. With then fishing, a whole load of different ones you could catch, which will give you different bonuses just like this. And that's all the details there listed for the Halloween update, but there's a lot more to it. However, we move on with the official details and there will be some shop updates with a bunch of new skins right there including the Grin Reaper outfit and a new skin for each of the different weapon types. With regards to the content schedule, the reset time is changing to Thursday 6 UTC for all regions. This is instead of Wednesday. So don't get caught out with that when wanting to complete that content and make sure to purchase your items from your stores and claim your weekly rewards with that adjusted time. For gameplay updates, we had a great quality of life improvement with regards to the minimap. You will properly be able to see your players guild and friendly guilds and party members along with friendly top rank players. Additionally, for PvP areas with regards to the field boss, is Morokai, Chernobog, Talus, Grand Elon, and Adentus, the area will be increased. Maybe that'll improve it a little bit by having a bit more play area, but those are still honestly a bit of a mess when you have one guild who comes with all of their team members and then everybody else who just wants a piece of the boss. And just be aware, if you do get a reward drop from that boss, you do have 10 minutes to claim it before it becomes available for everybody to pick up. Now be aware, crystal drops from co-op dungeon bosses and elite monsters will no longer be distributed to party members based on contribution, and instead everybody will have an equal chance to acquire them. This is pretty huge. You'll be able to get a lot more of them while farming in a party. And there will now be a new profile frame feature. You'll have to find that in your mirror boutique within profile settings. The sundries crafters will now offer weapon chests and armor chests. These were originally craftable from weapon crafters and armor crafters. So nothing really new there, just a location shift. But we have after claiming rewards with Amatoy Expeditions, the previous roster will be selected for the next expedition. So you don't have to always reselect everybody after they've finished a mission. With regards to your cooking ingredients, some are now more widely available. They've also renamed some of them. So all of these meats, rather than being a specific animal type, will just become like chewy meat, thick meat, etc. Now moving on to dungeons. This is a pretty huge update. You'll be able to gain extra star dimensional soul shards and at that it will be a selection chest. So every time you use that party matchmaking random queue, you will actually get rewarded for it. If you're not aware, those dimensional soul shards can be used to craft dimensional essence salvation, which you even have a chance to obtain from these random queues. And you use those to craft like your purple weapon here but also these armor selection chests you can get some great stuff so getting extra is absolutely huge there just be aware you still do have to claim the final boss chest so you have to have those dimensional contract tokens unfortunately Moving on, your chat will allow for additional windows. You can create more than one at a time and view multiple tabs at once. This is a pretty significant quality of life improvement. 
Then with your UI, there were a few display updates with Amatoys, Guardians and Morphs and a few other minor adjustments. In terms of say bug fixes, there were a few notable ones like fixing the adventure codex when it wasn't displaying the final reward, fixing an issue where friends list would disappear temporarily. And thank God, they fixed an issue that caused parties to unexpectedly disband during combat. I even got this in the middle of the arena game and it wasn't just me. And finally, there were a few key updates with Xbox and PlayStation with what buttons you're pressing for what. That is ultimately it for the entirety of the update that's coming tomorrow. A lot of big things. A load of new content with the Haunted Harvest event. New skins in the shop. Reset time changing to Thursday 6 UTC for all regions instead of Wednesday. Increased area size for PvP on these particular field bosses. Crystals will now have a much better time dropping due to not being based anymore on just contribution. Anybody in the team can get them. The random dungeon queue will have an additional star dimensional soul shard given, along with the chance to even get a dimensional essence salvation. And finally, yes, a fix to the bug where parties were unexpectedly getting disbanded.